All right, welcome back to another episode of Gig 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 Gap Tooth. I'm your host Azim. I had a small nervous breakdown today. You know what I'm saying? My face diaper broke. You know, and I'm like, damn, like, and I had to I had to tie it up, walk in the store. So I'm walking around the store. It's all lopsided, and I'm looking all crazy, like. How is my how is my face mask dyslexic? Like how is it? This just screams poor education. I'm walking. It's just it's a I'm a poster child for poor education. It was terrible, and I really like this 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 face diaper. So anyway, moving on. I got a, another special guest today. This brother is 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 one of the most brilliant individuals that I know. H. Prism, also known as High Priest from Antipop Consortium. One of the stories I can tell you about this man is the first time I saw him perform back in the day, I want to say it was uh, the New York Rican hosted by Bobito. The guy that got on stage after him was like, hey man, my name's such, I mean, you know, hey, look, we can't all be scientists. I mean, you know, I just got a little something. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not, I just, hey. <laughs> because the way the guy, the, his lyrics just came from another level. So without further ado, let's, 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 let's get this brother involved. Let's bring up H Prism. Peace, peace. What's going on, good bro? Uh, peace, man. What's the deal, man? Oh, uh, man. Everything's good. Everything's good. Hey, did you peep the versus battle last night with Young Jeezy and uh, and 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 and, uh, and 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 Guapo? Yeah, I did, man. It was dark, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was heavy. It's a lot of dark energy, man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I. I appreciate what both of those brothers do, and they both got their own particular charisma about them, man. But you know, just energetically, you know, and um, spiritually, man, they just both, you know, seem to be in, in some dark places, man. And you know, there was a point in the battle where Jeezy had mentioned that, you know, it was bigger than both of them. Right. And, you know, he was doing that for a lot of the recently slain rappers. So, you know, that was potent to see, but, you know, overall that was spooky, man. Yeah, it was, it was some spooky energy, a lot, and, 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 and real representative of, of the way, of, of what the subculture is like and actually what's being pushed out there, speaking of, speaking of all these dead rappers, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's something... I think we're one of the only cultures that celebrates death in that way, you know, yeah. negative, negative death, you know, in that, in that, in that way, you know, I think people who under, who embrace death on a, on the spiritual aspect or on the spiritual thing that it is, they don't murder each other like that. You know what I mean? They, they understand the sacredness of it all. I'd be scared as hell to murder somebody, man. Like, you know, that's a hell of a thing to, 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 uh, because, you know, just think about it like this. If you got locked up tomorrow, how many people would that affect? Let's say you got locked up, God forbid, for 20 years tomorrow. How, you know, the, the amount, your kids and, and your, 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 your mother and your, the, you know, extended family, your friends, so many people it would affect people, wherever you work, wherever you're teaching, you know, because I know you're busy, you know. I don't want to remain on that dark tip, though, because what I found beautiful at the end of that battle was that it, they, they came together when they did Icy, and that, and that, and that energy was able to, to at least diminish. Because you know what? When two brothers really, like, when two people kind of have that much energy for each other, man, them brothers really love each other. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that was evident as well. You right. know, there was a lot of love there, man. But, you know, I always say, man, that a lot of the reasons, we, we built on this before off camera, but 
a lot of the reasons brothers are in those modes is because they don't have the spiritual systems and the rites of passage to really be the warriors and the, you know, chiefs and the braves that they are. So they start to go into these different other, you know, ritualistic uh, behaviors, man. And, um, you know, they're just ultimately looking for those same manhood rites of passage that we always had in our ecosystem. And, you know, those are those brothers in these times. So, wow. You know, they, you know, they just have that energy and, you know, with no outlet for it. And this is, you know, how it manifests. Oh, yeah. Nah, true that. True that, man. Yeah. And that's the thing about the energy. that, And that actually takes me back now to just thinking about what we call back in the day. Because to certain generations, back in the day means a different time. But, you know, thinking about the earlier days of, of when we were coming up, you know, and the, um, the energy that was going on uh, in, in the environment. So, you know, you had crime and you had drugs, crack air, all that crazy stuff. But you also had, you know, nationalism, you know, God body. You had, you know, strong knowledge of self. You had real demigod like legends running around and this is the type of environment that you actually came up in pre art when you know as a shorty but could you share that one story that i know that when you first started rhyming and how you started rhyming based on that whole environment and coming up in that in that era yeah yeah well you know coming up in the early early 80s and whatnot, right after the real birth of hip hop and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? I was not far from the historical Queensbridge projects in an adjacent projects called the Story of Houses. And um, while we were living there, you know, we moved there when I was already, you know, later, you know, like probably 10, 11, and there were generations of families that lived there forever, you know, since those projects were built. So it was just like the three of us against, you know, families, you know, in multiple buildings and multiple generations of project life and whatnot. So living there and whatnot, you know, to be of it, but you know, to be from it, but not of it, you know, yeah. definitely was a challenge. And, you know, one of the ways, just as a survival instinct that I had to adapt was just finding out how to snap and, you know what I'm saying, how to really go in. So there was this one particular family that was on my, on my helmet every time, <laughs> you know, trying to take me off of here. And, um, you know, I don't even know what inspired me to go at him like this or whatever, but, you know, son just wanted to bring it to me and I just started rapping at him, <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying? And um, what made it so comical is the dude had, you know, he, you know, he was probably like 13, 14 and had missing fronts. So I just started breaking them down in rhyme form about his fronts. And then before you know it, a crowd started gathering so that was giving me energy off the head. And I just, you know, bodied them lyrically. And that was like the kind of turning point that, you know, I kind of earned a little respect being there and everything and got cats off of my neck for a little while. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Man, I, you know, that's, that's, such a, that's such a movie scene, you know what I mean? That's such a movie <laughs> scene. The, the, I was talking about in the intro, the first time I saw you perform was like, I had already known who you were through, through Saeed, but I came out to NY and I want to say it was the New York and I, it, it may not have been, but I remember Bob, Bobito was hosting. I think, um, and, and Mums was there. I met mm -hmm. Mums there. Mm -hmm. uh, you, Saeed, we all there. And then you came out on stage, you was wearing like a caftan and he was holding a big bouquet of flowers. 
Mm, I don't mm. know if you even remember that. You was holding a big bouquet of flowers, then you just came out spitting. It was like a, it was, it, it was like a, it, it was, it, it wasn't a, I, I don't want to call it an open mic showcase. It was more than that. It was like, no, you know, you had to kind of know somebody, I think, to have been up on the stage, but it was one song and then the next artist, one song and the next artist. But man, you stood out that whole night, you know, and the, and the, and the, because it was, like, oh, this cat is an artist, artist. Like, everybody else was a rapper. You were like, nah, this is art, you know? So, do you, first of all, do you remember that night? Or my, or, or, or is it? Mm, yeah, nah, you know, I, now that you're saying it, I do, but it's one of the moments that I hadn't even flashed back to and whatnot. But yeah, nah, I definitely remember that. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, so, I want to fast forward this now, like even before we get into to, to, to APC, which you know, which you're known for. Also, shout out Rebel Broadcast Radio on yes, Instagram sir. every yes, Saturday sir. at 4 p.m. That's what it is. Oh man. So let's talk about that a little bit because all right, first of all, man, I'm watching it build. You know, I know it's something that just started, but when you look in the scroll of the people who are stopping by, it's it's the right kind of people that you want paying attention to your stuff. So, and that's the thing about good art. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. So mm -hmm. when you're, this is like a living art form for you. Mm. Can you just explain a little bit uh, in your own words, I understand that it's music and visuals, but in your own words, what it because you could be doing anything. You could be getting up there, just you know, hey, this is this is some music I like. Nah, but it's it's a it's a it's like a museum installation piece every Saturday at four p.m. So uh, salute, what man, is it? salute? Yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, you know, when this whole quarantine situation started the real impetus for Rebel Broadcast was just recognizing, knowing that things were going to be a lot more digital however we move forward. It was just something to get me out of my shell, you know what I'm saying, and be a bit more communicative, you know, because, you know, as of recent, even though I began more, um, or I'll say even though that I'm more popularly known on the lyrical side of things my real passion is you know the studio and you know equipment and performing yeah so you know i was like damn okay let me come up with a vehicle to kind of stay connected to just my you know my people in the community that i'm from you know and um you know use the, use this for that purpose so now we're, you know, 34 weeks in, and it's kind of like a, weeks? yeah, 34 weeks, man. Uh, so it's all, at this point, I kind of see it, you know, definitely, you know, now that I'm incorporating the visuals, you know, there's that installation aspect, but then there's, it's also like a documentary of the transition to the new world, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, like right as the very first one was right, right before they announced it, there was going to be a lockdown slash quarantine. So I was like, damn, this, this is probably going to last. So let me just start coming up with a vehicle just to send some positive energy to my people and just keep myself inspired and challenged. So as you know, some of the earlier ones were a lot more just almost like DJ sets, right? And, you know, because everybody was doing the Instagram DJ thing, and um, you know, I was pulling from joints that people wouldn't commonly play in that type of space, but I started getting flagged from Instagram, so I <laughs> took a took a little survey from the handful of people that were tuning in and just asked them what they wanted to hear. And they were like, yo, we just enjoy you. So, right. you know, I just started 
It, it gave me a different relationship with my own catalog, you know, and, you know, my own process. And, you know, now we 34 weeks in and, you know, I that's got a joint. <laughs> yeah, sorry, oh, go, ahead. Bad, go ahead. All right, well, that's the thing about, about, about um, the, 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 the lockdown is that uh, for those people who I think had their heads right. Also, uh, just shout out the introvert. I know me myself. I'm a natural. I'm a natural introvert. Like I'm not outside chasing this club and that club or whatever. This this hype, that hype. I'm busy in my own mind doing my own thing. As I know you are. So it's possible that for us, it was a lot easier. I, I don't. I don't know what it's really like for somebody who's super extrovert and can't go out and haven't been able to go out with her. But I know for me, it's made me very productive. You know, I know a lot of businesses have grown, you know, home businesses have grown from it. A lot of podcasts, a lot of IG stuff, you know, so what do you say as far as, I guess this is kind of delving more into the, into the, into the realm of like self hacking and, and self-control, self knowledge of self, things like that. Like, because if you were uh, on the titty of the system in any way, and then the shutdown happened, you're freaking out. Oh, I don't know what to do. I, I can't go outside. I, I don't know. Uh, so how did, like, what is it that that, that enabled you to navigate through the and to make this pos, make this a positive thing instead of it being the uh, the pressure and negative thing that we're being programmed to say that it you know to, to live because I know there's there's thousands of people out there that are going crazy there's a lot of suicides drug drug rates are going high things like that we're not suffering that so. Why are we, what, what makes, what makes you different? Why are you not suffering that? Yeah, well, I mean, to be, to keep it 10,000, man, I'm not going to over approximate my own, you know, um, my own stability within this whole situation. Cause it's, it's definitely tenuous, but within that, you know, it just forced me to put certain things you know, on overdrive and everything. So, you know, I'm always super thankful, you know, that, you know, how, of how connected, you know, I am to a, you know, particular community, you know, that's growing and, you know, flourishing in certain ways for right now that's able to help me sustain. But one thing I just wanted to add on to is that what, during this time, I think I kind of learned a lot about myself in a certain way because prior to this, I think I was way more introverted because I had the security, you know, of not having to be connective to people in certain ways. And, you know, there were a lot of things and people that I took for granted. And now, you know, because of this mm. particular climate is forced me to be more connective and outgoing in certain ways. And, you know, within that, you start to amplify certain aspects of your personality or whatever. But um, you always want that to be kind of an organic thing as opposed to like a, a show or whatever, you know. Yeah. So finding that balance and just finding how much a, a lot of people that I may not even regularly see on a distant, you know, on a regular basis, like, oh, damn, I miss homeboy from the bodega I used to see all the time, or yeah. damn, you know, cat, you know, who I would only see. You find an appreciation. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find an appreciation. So, but, so, okay. But what if you weren't, and what if you didn't know you were an artist, right? I, I know it's hard to imagine. I just saw your face go like, "What does that? What does that mean?" Like, all right, because I for you, because what? Like, damn, 
Like, imagine, like, I don't know what else, what, I think that's what it, one of the things that, like, if, see, you have the outlet. You know, mm. I, for me, when I was growing up, I, I was stupid. I was smart, but dumb. I, did, I used all my intelligence to do mischief, and, and, and I always got in trouble. No matter what city I lived in, got in trouble. As soon as I started writing, like, oh, I like, I'm good at this. I like this. I have an outlet for my intelligence and for my creativity, because I was using my creativity for nonsense. You know what I mean? For mischief, you know what I mean? For lack of a better word. Once I've channeled it into creativity, constructive creativity, all trouble stopped. I stopped getting in trouble. I completely changed as a person. I became like a full person, you know? Mm. And, um, you know, I don't really, so I guess, you know, what I'm trying to get at too, really uh, surrounding the art is like, how do you do it, man? Because look, anti-pop, first of all, was one, known as one of the most um, artistic hip hop groups in history. You were also known, they were known, you guys were known to be one of the first hip hop groups to bang out on the MP3s and everything, all the live beats, keyboards, everything, turntables, live, um impromptu on stage and rhyme to it so all the show a lot of the shows were different then your your art form even goes into the museum realm you guys have done film scores but i know you've done like museum type of installations with your work mm. how how does uh, what the average person sees as a rap group they can't see Gucci, Gucci, and 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 Jeezy in a museum setting, and you know without it being like a chuckle involved, you know. Mm. But you guys do it in a serious, respected way, where the museum's like, "Yeah, come do that shit." What? How, what? I don't even know if they, what the question is, but it's just like I'm trying to get into like. How, what, 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 what is your, what, what affected you or affects you to see the world in the way you see it in order for you to execute the amount of um, different types of, 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 of things that you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that's a broad question. Am I, am I, do I need to keep, do I need to zero in a little more? Or you feel me? No, I, I think I see where you're going. I, All right. I mean, overall, you know, one of the things that I always tried to put in, you know, into perspective is more than how the work is created is how it impacts another person, you know, and I say that to say a lot of times within um, the quote unquote, you know, art field or what have you, you know, there's a distance place between a guy that juggles spoons, let's say, versus a virtuoso of something else. And how that impacts a child, how that impacts, you know, any given viewer who's not prejudiced by the trappings of art is something that I always considered. So when I look at something that's considered a high art piece, I try to, you know, look at what makes it that and what the real impact of it is. And, you know, so the B-boy in me says, oh, okay, that guy is your favorite artist? Let's battle then. Okay, right. you know, let's put his craftsmanship against mine or my teams and let's see how it weighs out on the scale you know you right. know what i mean so you know coming from an art background that really helped me study the aspects that people are weighing but my actual craft starts with a lot of you know techniques and tools that aren't always considered you know avant-garde per se 
but um when we put them on the scale beside one one another you know there's an impact so it took away any um fear or any um speculation about what the cultural impact is and another thing that was crazy to me is you know coming out of art school there were a lot of fine artists that in their whole art career they never even illustrated a black person or never you know classical musicians who never you know performed in front of a all black audience you know and had those type of experiences you know i have through right. the craftsmanship of my art so right. i can weigh it against other things and say mm -hmm. okay this is how my work impacts my my people <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah so within that i try to push things as far as i can imagine and still be connected in that way mm -hmm. and you know what i'm saying you know just you know that's kind of my process yeah nah i like i like what you said as far as just looking at taking something that's considered high art and 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 using your own filters to pick it apart and say okay what is it about this that why is this considered that this way? Mm -hmm. you know, put, put this through my own artistic filters and break it down. Okay, I see that. Okay, huh? All right, like, yeah, yeah. That's you know, and that's another thing is, is we can get which was really breaks us into travel because you know I know you've been all over the world with your craft. Um, I'm sure you've been to the to the museums in Paris and in Italy and, and in places like that, right? You know, um, is that what, see, here's the thing though. You did, okay, so you went to art school. Mm -hmm. uh, was that college or was that high school or what? Both. Both, all right. See, so that's the thing. You knew you were an artist from early. You already, kind of knew that right is that why you went to art school or was it just you know the one down the street i mean oh yeah yeah nah you know um you know um coming from junior high school to high school as i'm going through the art books and i mean through the high school books you know i was like oh word there's actually schools that you can go to and just do art, art? you know yeah so I'm sitting down with my guidance counselor and they're like, okay, um, you know, you got to take this test and get this portfolio together and blah, blah, blah. And with my school that I ended up going to, I found out about it like late with to have time to prepare a portfolio is like maybe a week. Mm. So you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm moping around like, damn, I wanted to go to this school, but I don't have time to make the portfolio and I don't have money for art supplies. So um, at that time, you know, I'm still, you know, I was at, still in the projects. And, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, my uncle at the time actually was um, uh, like a guidance counselor in Rikers Island. Mm. And um, so he was like, hey, man, you know, I could get you some art supplies from the art program and, mm. you know, I'll hook you up. So, you know, he brings home all of the art supplies that I needed. You know what I'm saying? I get the, the test and see what the requirements are, do all these pieces, go there that Saturday, boom, get in. First day of high school now, I go to school. I see Cool Keith from Ultra Magnetic, Crazy Legs, you know, the whole rock steady, because since it was an art school, all the graffiti writers were there, all the all the graffiti writers brought all the B-boys there. Wow. All the B-boys brought, you know, all of this. So yeah. I'm walking in, you know, and since it was in Manhattan, me being from Queens, it was only just literally 
I lived in Queensbridge, right drive over the bridge. Manhattan was my high school. So it was literally just like just a, dip. A, a dip, but a world away from my mental. Yeah. So I go down there, you know, the kids who lived in Manhattan, you know, they're living in, in Manhattan in the 80s in New wow. York. Wow. So they're, they're pulling up, you know, all b-boyed out and whatnot, you know. So it was just like I walked into a whole technical movie. Scene. movie yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, early <laughs> hip hop culture, you know. Right. So a lot of a lot of the kids who had like internships and all of that, they were really interning with Keith Heron and mm. you know, knowing Basquiat and right. you know, knowing these famous B boys and whatnot. So those were the kids that I was growing up around, and that then Fat Five Freddy and all them. Yeah, groups. yeah, pulling up to the school, to, you know, you know, right. try call Quest doing our school talent show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it was right. like a kind of, you know, mecca in that way that there was so many different overlaps that, you know, you just had to find your own way to do you, and you know kind of stand out so that's one blessing that I had early on was just to kind of like damn well what's my thing man this cat is ill at that this cat's ill at that you know so um you know at that time and you know I'll even though I ended up teaching now I was the worst <laughs> yeah. worst student ever you know what yeah. I'm saying yeah yeah me too me too so, man I got kicked out of almost every school pretty much every school I went to. But speaking, and, and, and that moves me on to, to, to one of the last subjects, man, which is, uh, which is education, you know? Um, most, of the, most of the people in my life who I, who I know and respect self-educate. And they find education, you know, self-educating about themselves and the world and history to be vital to their survival to, to be able to navigate through the matrix and through this um, false manipulated timeline, Roman timeline that we're, that we're on right now. Um, what type of stuff are you vibing on right now that you could share with people? What type of information, what type of philosophy or what type, you know, you still, look, are you looking into a, uh, What's the brother about Be Beverly uh, Pascal Randolph? Like who? Who you? What? what what's you know? What's what's fueling uh, fueling you intellectually right now? Uh, well, definitely, you know, salutes and you know, high praise to the brother Pascal Beverly Randolph. You know, being in Philadelphia, he put in a lot of time here. <laughs> so there's right. there's Pascal Street. And there's Beverly Street right oh. next to each other, you know. Wow. So I, I pulled up up there just to soak up some of the ethers and whatnot. Yeah. And um, you know, definitely high praise and honors to him. Wait. Uh, so for those who don't know, we have a lot of people listening who have never heard of that brother before. Can you just break down a little bit, uh, a, a very cap encapsulate his his background a little bit of who he is? Yeah. Um, Pashal Beverly Randolph was you know, a brother who, um, you know, on one political side, you know, he was the chief advisor to Abraham Lincoln. So he was his speech writer and, you know, handler damn near, you wow. know, and then on the side of the, you know, spiritual systems, he was the founder of the Rosicrucian Lodges. And, um, you know, in his life, you know, he was a, a hashish trader so he imported hash and cultivated, you know, um, hash from different, you know, parts of the country here while that was still legal. And this he, is a uh, brother we're talking about, just to be clear. Right, just to be clear, this is a black man. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, but he was, all, you know, also a master of the mystic arts at the same time. Right. So, you know, uh, people like, Madame Blavatsky and what have you did a lot of people look at these high esoteric acolytes all studied under him. Right. 
But uh, yeah, so he put in a lot of time here in Philadelphia. Right. And, I know uh, they had he, streets named after him out there. And he got streets named after him Philadelphia here. Philadelphia is heavy like that, man. There's so much history out there. People don't realize. Like, and it's, you won't know. You'll walk down, you know, Paschal Street and not even think, you know. There's a street out here I, called Shake a Mexum Street. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm the little, you know. So just as an insight, you know, um, with this being the first capital, if we reverse engineer the Constitution and look at the fact that that was adapted from the Hadassani and Iroquois Confederacy, and we know that there were Lenape and other tribes that were here prior to, we understand that there was another lattice work around the structure of what was taking place before the constitution was taken in place. Exactly. And if we look at the people that are here now, we can get an idea of what the people who looked like who were there then. <laughs> right, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's trippy, it's a trippy city. You know, much love to Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. And Philly, Philly's always had had a strong Islam vibe to it, just based on that Moorish history that it that it that it of its soil. You know what I mean? Philly just has that Islamic uh, vibration to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They'll be on the mm -hmm. they'll be on the corner selling crack, but be like, yeah, I gotta hit the mosque. I'll be right back. Hold that crack. <laughs> Go get these five rock outs, four rock outs real quick, and then I'm, and that's just that's just how it is, you know. Yeah. Man, so I don't know. I was gonna ask you to, uh, you know, we're we're at the four, we're at, we're at the fortieth minute. Um, I I want to say I really, you know, I I really appreciate you taking the time to share, you know, your 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 mind with us. And in the intro, I was explaining to them like. Man, it took me a minute to try to just try to figure out putting questions together for this, for this brother because if you don't ask him the right questions, he's not going to tell you. You have to ask the right It's like talking to a, talking to a sage, you know. The sage <laughs> don't just give you the information. You got to be wise enough to ask the right question, you know. So that's how you, that, that's how you stay, and it's, 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 it's a blessed thing, man. Um, you know, is there a peace... That 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 you could uh, share, or, or you know, either share with the people, or and or really, what I want to know is how can people support you? Because real artists need to be supported nowadays. So first of all, how can people support you? Let's get let's let's make sure we get that out there. How can people contact you and support you? Uh, well, across every platform. I'm H Prism. That's H P R I Z M. H Prism. So that's every platform: Twitter, Facebook, IG. And um, the biggest way you know you can support you know is by tuning in. You know, or, or the real biggest way you can support with uh, across another platform called Cash App. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> also, dollar sign H Prism. Dollar yeah. sign H Prism and Cash App. Yeah, yeah it's necessary, sir. man. It's necessary. You know, but um, yeah, man, you know, just sharing, you know, building, just to keep that energy moving because, you know, like I said, at the core, man, you know, my art is really just about pushing the boundaries of progressive art for our people and everything, man. So, you know, and our people being those that support progressive art and, no you know, doubt. so yeah, man, that's the biggest way you can support. Tune in on Saturdays, 4 p.m. to the Rebel Broadcast. Saturday, right 4 p.m. on Instagram. Yes, yeah, sir. Man, I had this in gallery mode the whole time. I should have done it like that. But either way, it's all good. Um, hey, man, can you just can you just hit us with a, with a brief, small, like, just something... Something you done cooked up lyrically 
and break it down for us a little bit, man, before you go? I think the mm. people really appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. All right, man. I said, um, just to assure you this is live and in the moment, I put together certain components and tones from times when we were convinced otherwise, like staring into eyes already gone. They said she was a live one. She was awake. She was unbroken. Mysterious health conditions arise with the weight of white pathology on your neck. We were integrated into burning homes. My generation was born covered with ash. Vision from the past and flashes. History mixed with fantasy clouded the memory. Nightmare in bed with the enemy flat break over me. Conspiracy and continuance of a fallacy. My cells say that I am an heir. Unaware but born here, born before the myth of Columbus. Born here before the idea of corporations governing born before the blindfolds in the scale time folds in on itself the poles flip now let me stop man i i ain't mean to break into a whole joint like that man but i i had the whole joint right here next to me so you said uh, uh uh what was the line um uh, integrated into a burning building and yeah I, yeah my, my ears immediately per perked up because i remember i know what that quote is from yeah, yeah, man, that's the good brother Martin, you know, yeah. getting awake and getting knowledge of self at the latter stages and being like, damn, maybe I effed up, man. What am I really promoting? Yeah, <laughs> what they right, got me right. out here doing? Hey, everybody, come join the corporation. It's cool in here, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. Come on, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I just give all that up. Nah, nah, nah. come on. We, uh, shit. Anyway, here we are, man, 2012. HP, man. Much respect and salute to you for that. Once again, Rebel Broadcast Radio every Saturday at 4 p.m. on Instagram. I want to see everybody. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace and love, Mo. Keep up the good yeah, work. Man. And you do the same, you know, you mad humble here on yourself, man. But, <laughs> you know, definitely salute to you, man, and everything you got going on, man. Good looks, man. Good looks, man. I, I, I'll be making my own announcements, God willing, sometime soon. So uh, I'm good. Right now, man, these is your flowers, bro. So yeah, so I'll take to you, it. man. And yeah, bro. And just keep it up, man, because you're necessary. Uh, you're salute, necessary. Man. Appreciate man. that, man. Yes, sir. All right. One love, HP. Peace, man. Peace.